Salvaging Parts, today on Mikey's Lab. Welcome back to the lab. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below to ensure you get all the latest updates from the lab. We're back today with a Maker Basics video. A lot of people tell me that making is expensive, and if you're buying all of the components brand new, I can understand that there is an investment here, especially if you're a young maker. Um, so I, today I wanted to just kind of dive in. I'm working on another video and I needed uh, a potentiometer actually to show an example of something else, video coming soon. Um, and I didn't have a new one in my lab. What I do have is a bunch of uh, kind of salvaged boards uh, around my lab. So I decided that I would just salvage the potentiometer from this and take the opportunity to produce a video showing you how I recover parts from, daughter, uh, from scavenged boards. So first thing you're gonna need, obviously, is a soldering iron. All right, uh, some desolder braid. Let me see if I can get this in shot for you. Some desolder braid and some solder. Reason you need some solder, most production boards, especially recently made, are using lead-free solder. That requires a lot of extra heat to work with and can be a bit of a pain. Plus, by applying some new solder, you're going to apply more flux. So we have two potentiometers on this board right here. We're going to try to salvage and one of the XLR connectors because these are always handy for uh, any three pin connector you might need. The XLR connector is great for. So if we just flip the board over, right here are the two potentiometers we were looking at. So if I just grab my soldering iron and grab some solder and we're going to go ahead and just tim the soldering iron and just reflow these solder connections just to make sure that there is a little bit of lead mixed into the solder just to make it easier for stuff to flow. Okay, now once you've done that, we can take our solder braid. All right, and this is kind of an interesting effect and I'm really hoping that it shows up on the camera well. But uh, when you apply heat to the solder braid, to the joint through the solder braid, I'm going to try to keep this as visible. You can see that the solder gets immediately wicked into the solder braid. Now chances are you're going to have to move the solder braid and apply another section because of all of the solder that's in there. But we just keep doing this until, the so until that solder joint that we're trying to uh, empty is about as empty as we can get it. Usually that takes about two or three times. Now, fair warning, solder braid's gonna get hot. Uh, you may also wish to limit the amount of time and come back on multiple runs with this if the component you are desoldering is heat sensitive. These are just standard analog potentiometers. They are not heat sensitive in any way. So we're just gonna go ahead and continuously hit this with the heat. And we can see that the solder just gets wicked right into the solder wick. Which I guess means it's very aptly named. Now what solder wick actually is, is it's copper, uh, copper braid covered with flux. So you notice that there's a whole bunch of flux coming onto this board. There already was. For some reason, whoever produced this piece of audio gear didn't clean the board properly when they were done. And then we just check to see if the component is loose. It appears to be. So we should just be able to pull it out. Put my solder iron down. And just give it a little wiggle. And now we have a brand new potential, well not brand new, but we have a new potentiometer that we can work with. When you recover these from devices, take the cap. Keep the cap, keep the, the nut that holds them. Those are very important for later. Now for larger components such as the XLR, 
we have the, the same three type connector over here. All right, these three pins here are all that's holding this, uh, this component in place. So we're gonna follow the, roughly the same procedure right, of heating, tinning our soldering iron, reheating the existing solder, adding some lead to it just to help it flow. Grabbing our solder braid. Be careful how quickly you do this. Solder braid can stay hot for a few minutes. I don't want any of you burning yourself. And we just tap the soldering iron against the solder braid so it heats up first. Solder naturally wants to flow to the source of the heat. Whatever is the hottest is where the solder wants to flow. Uh, the flux that's in the, the solder and in this uh, solder wick draws solder to it as well. So there's several pieces of the puzzle here that are very advantageous for the solder wick. Some people use a solder sucker. Um, I've seen both good and bad results with that. So if you have one of those, by all means. Um, mine broke about a year ago and I just haven't bothered to replace it, to be honest. Mainly because I, I never really had good results with the solder sucker. I've had much better results with solder wick. Now again, this is just a connector, so I am not concerned with uh, the amount of heat that we are pumping into it. The only thing that could be a, a problem later on is if uh, you melt some of the plastic. Let me wiggle the component and see if the pins move. Sometimes they require a bit more persuasion than others. You just gotta slowly heat one or two of the pins up and then it will let go. We have our XLR connector with no bent pins. So that's all there is really to this. So a lot of the components that people will use can be salvaged from existing or broken hardware. Um, a lot of my young maker life before I actually had a full-time job, this was how I acquired parts. All right, so there you have it. That is how to, with basic tools and a couple of supplies, a couple dollars worth of supplies, salvage components from either broken hardware or hardware you're not using anymore. It is a great way to get around the, the initial cost of making. It can also be a good way to get your hands on obsolete components. Now, for the most part, you have to ask yourself, why am I building with an obsolete component? Uh, sometimes it is because there's no other choice. Um, if you're trying to drive things like Nixie tubes or some 1950s technology, a lot of times the chips that are used for this have been uh, discontinued and there was no replacement for them. So this can be a skill that's used there too. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you for joining me in the lab. I hope you learned something, and I will see you next time.